Okay guys, so there's been some questions on welding brass, which brass is really kind of a cool thing to have in your shop. If you have a torch and some brass, you can almost fix and repair anything with it. Um, it's an it's a old way of welding. This was around way before the MIG welder, um, actually before the stick welder. This is the way that everybody welded things together was oxygen and acetylene or oxygen and propane. Um, but the most common that we know today is oxygen and acetylene. And um, this is really, really the way that the welding kind of kicked off. And it was, you know, a, a torch with heat, a flame that you can get it really hot and then you can get some brazing rod or you can get some regular um, steel. This is kind of a regular steel that I got right here for, for uh, welding together metal. Um, but brass, brass is so cool because it flows, it, it's low heat, it actually, once you learn how to weld it, it it's not the prettiest weld, but it usually always works. And that's what I love about brass. Okay, we got a hole. I'm just setting this piece up as a scenario with a hole in it. So say you had a piece of pipe tube that's on a, a radiator or it could be on a plumbing system or something and it's got a mile of hose hooked to it and to cut this out would be a nightmare. So what we want to do is we want to repair that, okay? And brass is a good way. This is just a mild steel. Um, so I'll show you how to repair that. Also, I've got some different pieces of uh, brass here. We got steel, we got brass, we got copper. We're gonna try to weld all this together today. These are just little examples so I can show you guys how braze welding works and how nice it is to have in your shop if you have a torch. There's some things that I go straight to this to weld with. I don't even mess with a TIG welder or a MIG welder. Sometimes when you know how to weld with a torch, you can make things so much easier. And it's fast, I mean, it doesn't always come out really pretty, but it always works. Um, this is just a regular, basically a cutting torch, it's a Victor. Um, this is a pretty common torch to have around your shop for cutting plate. Basically what these do is they come apart right here. Okay, and then these are all for a smaller torch, but then you can, you know, put your, uh, this is a rosebud for heating up material. So if you want to heat up a big sheet or you want to heat up a piece of real thick flat bar and bend it, this rosebud is what you want right here. Okay. These other ones are just tips. You know, they go from one to, or zero ought to four. Um, ought being the smallest tip, which this is probably one right here because a little tiny tip on it right there. And then you move all the way up to four depending on how thick and heavy a metal you're going to try to braze weld back together. Um, I've got a smaller torch right here that I'm going to use that's hooked to my to my gauges right now. Um, but typically you don't have to change your gauges for anything. You can adjust your heat right here on the same that you have your torches set up. So there's not a lot of adjustment. Um, I'm going to use a one. This is a one on here. It's probably going to work pretty good for what I'm doing. Uh, most of the stuff in my shop I can use a one for little things like this. And um, We'll start repairing a few pieces so I can show you guys how this kind of goes down. In there. All right, you got your settling right there, okay. Get it where the smoke's about ready to take off. See that smoke? So see how it's really smoky right now? We want to get rid of that about there, okay. And then you turn your oxygen on. And you hear how it's like making that noise? You want to calm that down a little bit. You don't need all that. Okay. Let's heat this up a little bit right here. Now remember, this one here is 2700 degrees, so you can really put some heat in this thing before you start with your rod in here. But what I like to do is kind of go around the piece and get it all warm in here so it'll flow in when you get ready to get going. You'll see it start to turn red. And stainless is pretty hard, so it, it takes a minute to get some heat in it. But as we go here, we're going to go ahead and start dabbing this in there. Now, I like to bring this out and get a little heat in it like this. And you can see, I like to pull away from it because you don't want too much in there. See how I like to heat up this end right here? And I just kind of walk it in there. And the thing about brass is it flows really well. So it'll actually flow into whatever you're welding pretty well. 
But this fitting, when I'm done with this fitting, you can actually use it. You know what I mean? If you want to use it on something, you can run fluid through it. If it's welded right, it'll flow good. You won't have to worry about any of the, uh, anything leaking out of it. Because brass, man, I'm telling you, when it gets in there, it flows in so good. It flows in really good. It's kind of fun to weld with, actually. Um, if you got a torch at home, you know, go get you some brass at the uh, welding supply store. You can get it anywhere. Farm and ranch store. They sell it everywhere because you, people use it so much for repair. Um, but this is cool. I'll show you. This fitting will actually work. Okay, there we have a piece pretty much made to do your get your job done. So if you're out in a field somewhere and you're broke down and you got to repair that and there's no way of connecting it, you can fix it like that. I mean, it isn't the prettiest, but that piece will work right now. You could hook your hoses up to that, whether it's this way or that way, and there's your connection piece. This is why carrying brass this is why you carry it. A lot of people, will, you know, they want to go out there and just weld on the table and do brass, but this is the reason why you have it, is this reason right here. So there's a piece of stainless. Um, this right here is brass. So these pieces don't fit. There's, there's just no fitting it. See that? There's no threads in there. This don't fit, but let's say, hey, I have this thread on this end over here that I, on a female end, and I need to plug a hose into that. Okay, and um, we're gonna fix that. Okay, so the best thing to do when you're welding brass like this, I mean, a lot of times you're not going to be able to just go out there and practice um, welding it. So if you have a chance to practice welding a little bit of brass and copper to brass, you can, you can interact these metals too. You can actually switch them on to some other, like I can weld some of this copper onto this brass. You know, say we got to weld this on there. We can actually do that and we might do it just to show you that it works. But there you, got a, there you got a repair job for a piece of brass. So you could screw this now into whatever you're working on. And then you can take this piece right here and plug it into your hose. I mean, it's not beautiful, but it's really hard to get brass to, to look really good. I mean, it's, it's pretty tough. But there you go. So now what we have is we've got stainless and we've got brass. Now we're going to try to do a little copper. I've got these two little pieces right here that we're going to stick together. Copper is probably 1900 degrees on melting temperature. Um, this one here, see that's, we had to, this one here, it, the actual stainless flowed better than the, the brass. Now copper is going to be a little bit, it's going to be a little tricky to weld too. Any of these uh, metals that are just, they're not a, a run of the mill everyday A36 or stainless steel, they get a little complicated. Most of the guys that mess with this copper will solder it together with solder and flux. But let's say you don't have any and you're in the middle of nowhere and you got this in your toolbox on your truck and you got a torch. Let's try it, see what we can get. See right now you could lay the solder to it if you wanted to because it's plenty hot for solder.
I mean, this copper flows pretty good. You got to be careful because you don't want it to come out the other side now. It's so hot that it's going to fall out the other side. So you got to keep it going. Okay, let's let that cool down and take a look at it. So you can see that it, it'll pull itself into it. Um, this isn't bad to weld some uh, with copper. You know, copper is pretty, pretty cool material actually. Um, but it flew, you can see how it, it flows in there really nice. So that's a repair, guys. I mean, if you're out there in the field and you gotta, you gotta fix something really quick, I mean, that's a real quick, easy way. Not all the time you got solder, but, and a lot of people probably didn't know that you could brass weld copper. So there's a perfect example of it right now, right here. So we've got that. Now let's just do a little repair on this one here. Um, you know, you could, we could say that this thing right here is a, you know, you're out in the middle of nowhere. You're working on a cat, say a cat dozer. And somewhere along the line, instead of pulling the whole radiator out of it, pulling all the radiator hoses out of it, there's a, a stretch of pipe there that has a hole in it, okay? And a lot of times it can be dirty. And I've even rust welded some rusty stuff together with this stuff. You gotta be really careful you don't burn through your material. You gotta heat this one really good and then just dip it in and dip it in. You gotta be really careful. And it's manipulating the metals. You gotta learn how to manipulate this metal to this metal with your heat, it, it really comes down to some experience. And once you've done it for a while, you'll start to learn how to do it. But like this hole, a lot of times it'll blob through and it'll fall through. So you gotta kinda know how to get it started and repair this hole. You get your heat down in here, you get it hot, then you pull it away and then I put a little heat in the tip of this and then I go in together. And then I just play with it until I can see how it's filling up and you don't want to get too much. You don't want to get it too hot because then your material is going to fall through and blob through. Then you got a piece of brass stuck inside your water line and it's going in through your water pump and it's going to mess up your impeller. So you got to be careful, you know, with that. So I'm going to try to show you how to do it without dropping a blob of crap down in there and then it goes through the machine. So this could be, this could be really good for you or it could be really bad for you either way it's worth taking a chance rather than taking the whole thing apart. So, oh, I was gonna throw it in the garbage, but I missed it. Okay, let's get this baby started up. Okay, so we've got us a hole in our radiator line, let's say. And there's really nothing you can do. You're out there in the middle of nowhere. I mean, typically you'd be laying on your back somewhere in a hay field, probably you're ready to catch the whole field on fire. But you want to get this piece a little hot right here, get some temperature in it. See it turning red there? Okay, right there, it's ready to, it's ready for it. And then you, I like to come out here and put a little heat in this thing. Keep it on your piece but kind of just stretch it. And you want to do it slow because you don't want that to blob through. You can see I'm just slowly working it around. See that? And then let it cool down for a minute. See the hole starting to come in? And then let it cool down a little bit. See, I got some temperature in it now and I can play with it until I get it. And I kind of just go around the, the hole really slow like this until I can get, until I can see, see it's starting to close in there. You don't want it to blob through. And this is a, this is a great way to repair anything. Let it cool down a little bit, give some more to it. It's all in your temperature. You gotta remember you're taking this thing right to its melting point every time and then you gotta, then you gotta give it a little let it back off itself a little bit. We're getting real close to filling up this hole. It's really hot right now, so you gotta be careful. I got this little blob right here. I'm gonna try to melt that into it here in a second. But I don't wanna put too much heat on it because we don't want it to fall through, remember.
Okay, we're getting real close. See that little pinhole left? There's just a little pinhole right there. Gone. Then I just put a little bit on top. Give it a little love right there. Okay. That's our repair, basically, right there. So, um, if you can do it correctly, you just saved yourself a ton of time to tear that machine apart. If you can look in there, there's a little bit of solder in there, or a little bit of copper, but it didn't fall in there. That's gonna be fine, because it's hard, and the water's gonna flow by it, but if you drop a piece in there, that's when you're gonna have a problem. But to fill that little hole up, that's what it looks like. If you can get a good look at it. And that's basically a nice little repair. All right, so let's now I'm going to put a little heat in this because this plate's pretty thick and um, we're going to weld some, uh, this is about a 3 16 plate. I mean it's pretty thick but I just want to show you that you can actually weld this together. You know this tip might be a little bit small for this thick of material because you know of course the more, the bigger the tip the more heat you can put in it and you can see that it's struggling to get heat in this plate and it makes it tough to weld so what we'll do here is I'm gonna I'm gonna put a bunch of heat in this thing there you go you need lots of filler there you go once it got good heat in the material. I heated it all around here. It, it wanted to pull it into it. So once you do that, it'll pull it into the material and that's what make, creates the weld. Um, and a lot of times you can, you know, I could add a lot more filler to it, but this is a pretty nice little decent weld for brass. I'm on a thick piece of material. This, this tip's really pretty thin, uh, or a small size for this thick of material. Okay. We'll weld this really quick. It's just a a corner piece that I had here laying around the shop and maybe we can see if this thing will weld decent but these are great uh, you know like if you guys w order the welding kit on uh, welder 101 you can get that welding kit that we have you can always brass weld with them too you know set you up set you up a little uh, a little area in your shop and learn how to brass weld. You know, tack weld you some stuff together with your MIG welder and then just learn how to brass weld with it. Well, we want to put a little heat in here again. We're going to actually give it some heat. Let me really heat this thing up. Because when you're, when you're running with a thick material like this, Me and Merlin, I don't know if you guys have been watching our Make It Run episodes on uh, Make It Run Again, but guarantee you, in that little bag that Merlin's carrying around, there's probably a couple little pieces in there about probably this size, maybe a little bit longer, just in case. Now on episode one of Make It Run Again, if you guys haven't watched that, um, we uh, got a 68 Chevy uh, C20 motorhome. We drove it back from Reno, and one morning we got up, we went to fire the thing up, and the gas was so bad that it basically glued the motor shut. And when the, uh, the push rod went to come up, everything was seized up, so it bent the push rod. So nothing was open. There's nowhere to get a push rod. We took it back. We pounded it out straight. We found some old guy up the street that had some brass and a torch and we repaired it. We strengthened it back up. We put it in the truck and it's still in there today. We haven't even changed it. It's still fine. Why even change it? So what I'm saying is brass welding is a great way to 
repair things. It's a good, it's something good to know how to do. It takes a little bit of practice. You got to learn your heats on how to control your heat on different material. As you can see, every one of these are different, is a different heat. Um, but it's not really that complicated. Once you start seeing how it flows and when to add the material, I mean, I would, the, the most complicated piece here to weld today was probably the brass. You know, the brass was a little complicated. But you just keep working at it. It's never going to look super pretty. Um, but there's a lot of cars in our past that we've done for Vegas Rat Rods and just cars that I've built that I love to brass weld because I like that vein of brass through the vehicle. It's decorative. It's a really cool look. It's super old school. It's really kind of what, you know, our forefathers were using before the MIG welder and before the actual stick welder. Stick welder didn't come in until the early, early 1900s um, when they could actually generate power to a welder. Um, once they come up with electricity, then they could run a electrode. But prior to that was oxygen and settling. So this is an old technique on, that's been around for a long time. I think everybody know, needs to know how to weld with a torch. I think that's where everybody should start, to be honest with you. I'm sure that we can get out here and do it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.